pray. After this service, you will get an answer to that question. Whatever is a mockery to your expectation, the hand of God will intervene for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Someone came with a burdened heart. I want to let you know you will live here full of joy. You will live here full of laughter. Whatever manipulation that is going on in your life, it will be crushed in this service. Say amen like a believer. Put those hands together for the Lord. And please take your seat. God bless you. Still in our teaching series for the month of April 2018, serving God pays the most. By my little understanding, people don't look for job where they pay less. Am I correct? They look for jobs where their pay will be enough for them and be able to spare to their family. Any job that pays less, you don't do it with the whole of your heart. You say to yourself, I'm just marking time here. This job is not a... I'm just here just to fulfill our righteousness. I can't pay my house rent from this job. Even the little that they are paying me, I'm still paying transport inside. <laughs> but you, sank, you can't serve God and end up being paid less. You are paid more. Tell your neighbor you are paid more. Serving God is one of the most profitable opportunity anyone can seek to get. Not seek to lose. Serving God is one of the most profitable opportunity that must not be toyed with. It is a service that goes with a commitment. It is a service that is backed up with an oath. It is a service that is backed up with an unfailing covenant, not promise. God's word to us is more than a promise, it's a covenant. Psalm 89 and verse 34, My covenant will I not break nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. And he said in Exodus 23 and verse 25, you shall serve, I shall bless. A covenant is struck by that word, you shall serve, I shall bless. So if you get committed serving, God must not fail in pain. If you get committed serving, God must not withhold what you are due for. If you get committed serving, God must not carry what belongs to you and transfer to another. Serving God pays the most. No matter where you walk, there is no place where they give you life warranty. They can only give you sick leave. Am I correct? But here you enjoy not only material and financial reward, you also enjoy preservation of life.
when you know who you are working with and how he treats you, then you are committed to do more. If who you are working with is not treating you well, you will not be fully committed. Am I saying the truth? If who you are working with is not interested in your matter, you will not give him your best. But our serving God commits God not only to our physical affairs, but also to our family affairs and everything that pertains to our life. Do you know that our extended family, they benefit from our service? They benefit. They benefit from our service. That is why our serving God must be seen and believed to be a covenant. Because God is not a joker. And until you see it as a covenant, you will treat it casual. When serving God becomes a delight, then soul winning will be seen as a thing of pleasure. When you love what God loves, the one you are serving, you will do what he likes. You will do what he loves. We are not serving God because we need money or we need a pay. We are serving him because we love him. We are serving him because we love him. Now, naturally, there are some servants that if they tell them, no, you will be, you'll be relocated today, you say, I'm not going anywhere. I want to be where my master is. Have you seen that before? I remember there was one pastor that was posted to me. He served 2008, 2009, 2010. They now posted him to go and be pastor one. He said, I should call bishop and tell bishop that he's not going. So I said, why won't you go? You are going as Pastor One. He said, I prefer to be under you here than to go and be Pastor One there. The wife came and started rolling on the carpet. Say, Daddy, tell him that we are not going. Tell him that we are not going. That we are okay here. We are okay here. <laughs> I said, it's promotion. He said, no, we don't want the promotion now. Now hear me. Let me tell you something. There is a way you will love to serve with your master. If they tell you, go to another place, you say, I'm not going. I might say something to somebody. Yes, I'm trying to bring a graphical picture so that we can understand what it means to serve God. Ruth said something, entreat me not to leave thee, not to depart from following thee. Entreat me not to leave thee, not to depart from following thee. When serving God becomes a delight, anywhere he wants you to go, you will go. Anything he wants you to do, you will do with all pleasure. You are not under stress because you know that your service is in the interest of your master. And whatever your master is thinking will bring you good reward. I want you to hear this. Our serving God is not punishment. It's not punishment. And until you begin to see that it's not punishment, when it is time for soul winning, you will not struggle. The reason why you are struggling, you have not trusted your master enough. You have not believed your master enough. I'm not saying that you are doubting him. In that area, you have not trusted him enough. If there is any area God desires all to serve and serve well, it's in the area of soul winning. Tell your neighbor soul winning. Let me put it this way. What will I do now that will make my master excited? That will make my master happy? That will gladden the heart of my master? 
It may not be being in the CCU or being in a prayer band or being in the choir. It is soul winning. And hear this. Soul winning is a big time. Say with me, big time. Kingdom business that anyone can invest in. Scripture says, he that winneth a soul is wise. He that winneth a soul is what? Wise. Not only that, there is rejoicing in heaven over one soul that is saved. Now let me shock you. That you bought a car will not create a rejoicing in heaven. Is that shocking to you? That you built a house is not a, it will not create rejoicing in heaven. But that a soul is saved. Angels will be clapping hands for you. In fact, there is going to be praise jamboree that day. That you brought a soul into the kingdom. Not that you bought a car. Not that you built a house. Not that you got a, a green card to travel abroad. Thank God for all those testimonies. But that a soul is one. There will be party that day that someone has been brought, someone has been saved into the kingdom. So soul winning is a big time investment. And hear this, God is not a joker of words. He said, do not be deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, he said, that shall he reap also. If you sow to the flesh, you shall of the flesh reap corruption. If you also sow to the spirit, you shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. So it is a worthy investment, not a careless investment. Don't make light our investment in soul winning. When we are going out for outreach, please take it as a serious business. Don't say, if I don't go now, pastor will be looking out uh, for who he will shout for. Why must he shout for you? You are investing. It's just like a normal business. Who is interested where you put your money? I've not seen a businessman that puts his money in a careless place. Or in an investment that will not yield profit. That is how you can liken soul winning. Soul winning, we are investing spiritually. Because there must be a guaranteed return. There must be a guaranteed return. So since investment is what determines your return in this kingdom, <laughs> how you treat soul winning will determine how God will treat your matter. How you respond to soul winning will determine how God will respond to your issues. That's why we must take it with all delight. Say with me, delight. What I mean be delight, I mean get interested, get excited. It must excite you. It must excite you. It must excite you. It must excite you. If it is not exciting you, then you are, in not, you are not in a partnership with God for the advancement of his house, for the advancement of the church. Until soul winning begins to be a delight to you, then your matter cannot be an issue of concern to God. God sees soul winning as the biggest business. Say with me, the biggest business. We can do other things. All those are variety. We call them variety. Every other thing we are doing is variety. But soul winning is the main thing. God wants to see men saved. God wants to see men's life transformed. God wants to see someone's destiny changed. God wants to see someone rescued. Someone prayed for you to be here. Am I saying something to somebody? Someone prayed for you to be here. You didn't just come home. Someone prayed for you to be here. Someone sacrificed time for you to be ministered to. Who have you sacrificed that you should be here? Who have you given time to so that the person will be transformed? It is an investment that everyone has the capacity 
to invest something to. So in prayer, God expects us to pray. In reaching out, God expects us to reach out. How is serving God a big time business? How? How is he a big time business? Don't forget, God said in his word, you shall serve, I shall bless. That word bless is bigger than money. Say with me, bigger than money. I shall bless. The blessing of God is the most superior currency for life. What blessing can give you, money cannot give you. The door blessing can open, money cannot open it. The opportunity blessing can give you, money cannot give it to you. Friends cannot give it to you. You need the blessing. Everything we are striving for is for the blessing to stick upon our life. The blessing has the power to change the tides of events in your life. That's why you must be particular about the blessing. If you are not particular about the blessing, then you will live as like an unfortunate child. You need the blessing for your destiny to open up. You need the blessing for your future to answer for you. You shall serve, I shall bless. When the blessing is at work in your life, you can survive in any country. When the blessing is at work in your life, anywhere you step into, the earth opens up. Because the blessing is at work. So you need the blessing. Tell your neighbor, you need the blessing. You shall serve, I shall bless. Your life cannot go forward, my life cannot go forward without the blessing. The people we meet is by chance, but the blessing is eternal. The people we meet, they can change their mind, they can misbehave, they can say they are not helping you again, but the blessing cannot be obtained. When the blessing follows you everywhere you go, the blessing shows. Man can withhold what he has, but no one can stop what God gives. The blessing is better. Walk, strive, give your heart for the blessing to stick. I won't forget what Pastor Jeremy told me one day. He said, I'm telling you now as my son, man can change their hearts towards you, but make sure God does not change his heart towards you. Work to make sure the blessing sticks for you. Say, so when you secure the blessing, everything will work. Who is angry with you is not important. Who doesn't like your face is not important. The most important thing is that the blessing have answered for you. You shall serve, I shall bless. So the most potent and important reward of everyone serving is the blessing. The blessing. The blessing. Why are you in church? The blessing. You are not here to look at who wear fine clothes today. Or whose perfume is more better. Or whose shoe is more finer. You are here for the blessing. You are here for the blessing. If your blessing depends on man, you will have been the most frustrated fool. If what you will eat all through this week depends on man, you will suffer shame. That's why you need to serve God with the whole of your heart. Because he determines what you get by time. Every good and perfect gift coming from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness, neither any shadow of turning. No wonder the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From where cometh my help? My help cometh from God. Hear me? You are here for the blessing. Amen. Press to get the blessing. Amen. Press in service to get the blessing. Your reward is not in any man's hand. If your reward was to be determined by men, 
I'm telling you, people that lobby well, they will have lobbied more than you. If the blessing was politicized, I hope you know we will have a stronger APC. Do you agree with me? We will have something stronger than APC. We will have something stronger than PDP. If the blessing was to be politicized, he's saying amen for his own. <laughs> Leave him alone to be saying his amen. No? <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying now? But thank God. Tell your neighbor, thank God. thank God. This blessing cannot be manipulated. This blessing cannot be manipulated. That's my biggest joy. That's my biggest excitement. If this blessing were to be manipulated, I know that some people will not give it to me. But I'm telling you, Do you know that if this blessing were to be manipulated or to be decided by men, they will be holding meeting on your head every day. They will be holding meeting on your head. They will tell, Pastor Madawa, I'm telling you people, you who are the pastors we know in Lafayette, people should not give him. <laughs> but the blessings that come from above is not a consensus decision. That's why everyone can walk towards his own. Everyone can press towards his own. Hear me? You are where you are by reason of what you have done. You can change level this same month. You can change level this same month. You can change level before June. You can change level before December. If you are the one that determines it, then press into it. You shall serve I shall bless. I shall bless. One thing you don't even know about the blessing, which I will want you to know, that's part of your reward, every service you give into cancels enchantment. Every service you give into cancels causes. I don't know who has vowed for you they cannot match the blessing that is coming for you. The blessing is stronger than the causes. The blessing can silence the causes. But causes cannot silence the blessing. You shall serve. I shall bless. When God said I shall bless, who can unbless? Scripture said the Lord of hosts has proposed. And who shall this annul? His hand is stretched out and who shall turn it back? Can you withhold God's hand when he says he wants to bless me? Your hand will fry. Your hand will turn to stockfish. So you must know what is coming. Your, many people's problem is ignorance of what is coming for them. If you have a better understanding of what is coming for you, you will be ginger. Tell your neighbor ginger. To do more than what you are doing now. You shall serve, I shall bless. So it takes service to cancel causes. It takes service to delete enchantments. It takes service to, to frustrate frustration. It takes service to eliminate limitation. You need more, more dedicated service. No one that Joshua said, ask for me and my house. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. So in service, you are not wasting time. You are pressing. Tell your neighbor, pressing. Into the blessing. You are pressing into the blessing. You are sure the blessing must come. Because the one that said he will bless is not a joker. He said, by myself have I sworn. In blessing, I will bless you. You think I'm wasting my time doing what I'm doing? I know where I'm going. That's why people that know what they are doing, they are not afraid of people that are holding meeting. Your meeting is nonsense. That's why I say take cancer together. Take cancer together, be broken in pieces. He said, diverse a strategy, it shall not stand. It shall not stand. Hear me? You are at an advantage position 
serving God. Anytime you withdraw back, Satan is the one holding you back. Because you agree to stay back. Tell your neighbor, press on. You are not wasting time serving. I like us to hear this also. The blessing of service is transgenerational. What do I mean by transgenerational? Not only you benefits from the reward, your children benefits from the reward. The blessing of service is transgenerational. By your service, God can show mercy to your family. By your service, God will show favor to your children. Let's see it in Psalm 112. Praise ye the Lord, verse 1. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord and delighted greatly in his commandments. That delighted greatly, not softly, or occasionally, greatly in his commandments. And one of the commandments, serve the Lord. Verse 2, his seed shall be what? Mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright shall be what? What is generation? People that come after you. Verse 3, wealth and riches shall be in his house and his righteousness endure it forever. Meaning, you will now rise up and crash down. You will keep going up. You will keep making progress. You will keep seeing good. That amen is too weak. You shall serve, I shall bless. Another reward that makes serving God exciting is long life. He said, with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my what? I don't know. Was it Facebook or where did I see it? A husband and wife, they are celebrating. This one is 107. This one is 102. And they ask them, what is their secret for living this long? They say, stand for the truth and delight in God. Did you hear me where? Stand for what? Stand for what? And delight in serving God. That's all. Stand for the truth. Some people stand for lies. Others stand for gossip. Others stand for blackmail. Stand for the truth and delight in serving God. Their teeth is still, is still intact, oh, which means they are still chopping meat. It's not that they will grind it and maybe put it in their mouth like a children. They are, they are mashing a... <laughs> Tell your neighbor, stand for the truth. With long life, will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. What are the returns? For serving God through soul winning. Number one is quick returns. Hear this. You can be a server in his house and you are struggling to get things done in your life. Scripture said, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall grant you your heart's desires. Delight yourself in the Lord 
and he shall grant you your heart desires. Now let me make a physical example. Take these five persons that are here. If any time I call, okay, let me exclude my wife. Let me take four of the pastors and the seven and the six that are behind. If any time I call, if any time I call, go do this, go do this, go do this, one is responding. Who will you think I will be quick to bless? No, no, I want you to be sincere. They are all men of God, though. They are not men of Satan, no. They are all men of God. Now, they are ten. Anytime I call, go do this, he will respond. Go do this, he will respond. Go do this, he will respond. Who do you think I will be quick to respond to bless even when the person didn't even ask? That is how it is with God. That is how it is with God. Should I show you in scripture? Open your Bible to Proverbs chapter 1. Let's take it from verse 23. Turn ye at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit upon you, and I will make known my words unto you. Verse 24. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and none regarded. But you have set at naught all of my counsel and will none of my reproof. Look at verse 26. I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. Verse 27. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a wild rain. When distress and anguish cometh upon you. Look at verse 28 now. Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they shall not find me. Is that in your Bible? So God is not a joker. He's never partial. If you are not responding to what I am saying, when you two, you will call, I will not answer. It's very simple. Is he not a good God? Yes, he's a good God. Is he not a merciful God? Yes, he's a merciful God. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you also forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. So if you are expecting quick response, quick returns, check your heart. Are you responding quick? Are you responding quick? So it's very easy to know whether you will get an answer concerning an issue. It's very easy to know. You can use your own response to know whether you will get an answer from God on a particular issue. You can use your own, your own, your own action to prove. If with this physical example, I call, it doesn't respond. You know, some will even respond, but after they have... Uh, let me just do it to fulfill all righteousness so that he will not call me a bad person. Likewise, when God is tired of your matter, when he's wearied of your trouble, let me just allow this person to rest. Go and read it in Luke chapter 18. The widow that troubled the unjust judge. Now, I want to let you know, you determine how God responds to you. Like in scripture, he said, before you call, I will answer. While you are here speaking, I will perform. Before you call, I will answer. There are others. May I thinking about the opportunity or the blessing or the open door, God sends a helper. God sends someone that will connect them to the blessing. Very simple. Check your heart. Hear me? It is your heart that determines the quality of your service. It is also your heart that determines the response that you get. Why? I, the Lord, search the heart. And I examine the ray 
to reward every man according to his what? Deeds. So it is our deeds that determine how he rewards and how he responds. So when serving God becomes a delight, getting a response from God is quick. Tell your neighbor, it's quick. That's why you can, with all certainty, know that this year you will end up in blessing. This month you will end up in blessing. This week you will end up in blessing. Because you know that God cannot withhold anything from you. And lastly, the second return of service, of soul winning, of kingdom advancement, is a covenant platform for the steady rise of giants. Inside each and every one of us here now, there is a giant. Financial giant. Career giant. Many of you here will build estates. Don't say, don't say amen and be afraid. Say a good amen. Why? It is written concerning you, a little one shall be like a thousand. And a small one like a great nation. So inside of each and every one of us here is a nation. You are not just a person. You are a nation. You will grow to a point where you don't need P.O. box. You are the P.O. box. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Take for example now, if they want to send letter to Bishop David, does he need P.O. box? Even the Okada rider knows the place. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? Or a robot does not need P.O. box. Kenneth Copeland does not need P.O. box. He's already P.O. box. I want you to hear this. You determine your level per time. Your change of level is in your hand. It's not in the hand of anybody. That's why everyone is serving his way to his top. You are not serving because others are serving. You are not serving because others are what? Serving. You know where you want to reach. So you are serving your way to your top. Where you are now is good. But there is a place called better. Where you are now is better. But there is a place called best. I want you to hear this little by little. Scripture said the part of the joss is like a shining light. That shine brighter and brighter and brighter. That's how you'll be serving and you'll be going forward. That's how you'll be serving and you'll be getting to your top. That's how you'll be serving. Bigger doors will be opening for you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Likewise, the blessings of God, they are in levels. That's how you'll be serving. Bigger levels will be, bigger blessings will be calling for you. That's how you'll be serving. Bigger favor will be calling for you. God does not bless all equal at the same time. He bless us in levels. He bless us in levels. That's why I'm glad to let you know there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. I said there is hope for you. What serving God can give to you, no man can give it to you. What serving God can put in your hand, no man can put it in your hand. Hear me? No matter what any man puts in your hand, it cannot be up to one-tenth of what God has in mind for you. Rise up to your feet. We are going to pray one prayer. The thing just came now, now, so we are going to pray it. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 14. Remember me, oh my God, concerning this, and wipe not out my good deeds that I have done for the house of my God and for the offices thereof. And look at verse um, 31. And for the wood offering at times appointed and for the first fruit, remember me, oh my God. For what? We are going to pray. Lord, remember me. I've been serving. 
you owe no man nothing. If serving you pays the most, Lord, remember me. Praise God. You are going to pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, remember me. Remember my labor. Remember my commitment. Remember my sacrifice. Remember my tireless commitment towards the advancement of this house. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. Remember me. Remember my sacrifice. Remember my labor. Remember my commitment. Remember me for good that I have done towards the house of my God, towards the advancement of this church. Lord, remember me for good. Remember me for good. Remember me for good reward. Remember me for good. Remember me for good reward. Leande Gleroche, Father, remember me. Remember me for good in the name of Jesus. Remember me for good. Remember me for good. Remember me with your favor that thou bearest unto thy people. Lord, remember me. Remember my good deeds. Remember my tireless commitments. Remember me for good, for good, for good reward, for intervention, for turnaround, for a change of story in my life. In the name of Jesus, Father, remember me. Leon de Goro, Shekota, Zezoni, Ada, Breclicotezo Zileaba, Loro Shagadaros, Igalo Breglis do Cise Liga de Roja, Lehan Dobro, Shikloprem de Duze, Jacuta Tilari and Dobre di Zozona, Jaco Cise Lianda Brada, Lehan Doboro, Shikote Perianda Lada, Leganda, Monondo Vike Bregledus, Azoze, Jacuzzi Zendia Legadata, Lord, everyone that have been tirelessly committed towards the advancement of this house, of this church. Lord, remember for good. Remember the person. Remember me. Remember my family. Beratolia ba regodosi abalada le baro shagado zegede berugade libranto zeze niga brego duze ziata In Jesus' name we have prayed. As you partake of this communion, favor will answer in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Wherever you have been forgotten, this communion will provoke favor in your life. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Any blessing that has been withheld from you, by this communion, I command a forceful release of your portion. That which you are due for and you have been denied by man. I decree by this communion the blessings are transferred to your heart. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Whatever manipulation has gone on against your life. By this communion, I decree let the manipulation scatter. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any arrow fire to divert the blessing you are due for. I decree by this communion, the arrow backfires in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. As you partake of this communion, watch out between now and Sunday. Favor will break forth in your life. Favor will break forth in your career. Favor will break forth in your family. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray.